It's a safari, all right. Last Halloween, many were exposed to Cabela's Dangerous Hunts for the very first time. Dangerous Hunts 2013 is a magical game. Summed up, it's the story of a psychopath out to kill any animal larger than his car keys, with underlying strange lore implications the whole way through, and it's all through the lens of a major retailer. I said that I thought it was the greatest hunting game ever made, and I still think that. But people did ask, why not do Dangerous Hunts 2011 first? There are a few reasons for that. For one, I knew the game had some sequences that are basically the test versions of the 2013 ones, the game plays a lot more like a traditional rail shooter, and unlike 2013, it never came to PC, and emulation had its own pile of quirks. But with time, all has healed, and we can properly enjoy this 2013 companion piece. Just be warned, this may have only raised more questions. Okay, let's take it from the top. Well, just like 2013, the main menu music is incredibly honest. Ah, that's what we like to see in hunting games around here. Menu music that gives me fond memories of the Alien opening. I can't wait to see what my favorite sporting goods store has for me this time. Anyways, the special edition has the option of cartoon mode. The definition of cartoon here is loose. If you want everyone to look unfinished and terrifying, I guess I could recommend it, but we're gonna skip this our first way through. There is something familiar about that picture, but we'll worry about it later. New campaign, normal difficulty. Keep your voice down and watch your step. I don't want this thing to hear us coming. All right, headlamps on. Huh. Didn't bet on the cold open in the subterranean elephant graveyard. Or maybe something else. Get a load of that. And gather we aren't the first hunters to come this way. And this is where you get your first meeting with a control scheme. You look around and aim like a rail shooter, but you still control your legs separately. Which is about as awkward as it looks, but it does give it some advantages over 2013, which I'll talk about a little later. I'm starting to get a bad feeling about this job. They're not paying us enough. What was that? <laughs> we are not the hunters here. Hyenas? Vikafta is hunting us. Take it easy, Mbeki. I don't believe in fairy tales. It's probably just... Kill the lights! I've got doubts about this. See? Nothing to worry about. Get out! Run! You all right, sir? Get ready. Cabela Spring Great Outdoor Days is here. It's our biggest sale and event of the season with huge discounts and the latest gear from all your favorite brands. It had been years since I'd last set foot on my family's land. My father was never an easy man to get along with, but I knew how much this hunt meant to him. I had no idea what was waiting for us in those cold woods. No idea that my life was about to change forever. So this all fed into a 20-year time skip, where you listen to an old man marvel at nature over Lord of the Rings music. It's a bit jarring after the cryptid attack and brooding Troy Baker. The first time we walked these woods, you boys were just pups. And I had to carry you up the trail on my shoulders. You wanted to hold my rifle, but your hands were too small for the trigger. Hang on, there is some unpacking to do, but that voice. Be patient. You want the buck, but you don't have a shot yet. That's Dad from 2013's voice. Like, he's speaking a little more folksy, and the microphone isn't quite up to snuff, but it's him. I checked. I guess they just had him play the Dad across both games. He's starting off strong this round. Regaling us with a story about how his young son wanted to hold his gun, but his fingers were too small for the trigger means that he tried that shit. And uh, I'm really fucking unhappy to see a mountain lion already. Your ancestors were among the first settlers to lay eyes on those hills. For seven generations, the Rainsfords have hunted these woods, fished in these streams. This land is in our blood. Okay, so this time he's Samson Rainsford instead of, uh, other dad. Listen, boys, the wind is talking. It says, welcome home. All right, he might be a bit quirky, but he loves the outdoors. Please be a normal field trip. I thought I heard the wind say something about picking up a sandwich before we hump all the way out here. I don't know what passes for hunting with those yahoos in town, but up here we do things differently. 
No eating, no jawing, and so help me, if I hear that cell phone of yours go off... Oh! No eating allowed on this hunt. The story is framed that your brother Adrian is the cool, skilled hunter, and your character, Cole, is the one who sucks. You've spent too long with city folk things like electricity and cooking, so of course Dad makes you prove yourself. Shoot some icicles, shoot some Alaskan... pineapples? What are those? Then comes the live practice with a flock of geese. Dad needs to know I'm committed. Not bad. Of course, you'll never be the marksman your brother here is. Really? I suppose that can't be helped. You favor your mother's side of the family. She wasn't cut out for this country. Oh, I expect she's more comfortable down south with her shopping malls and tofu salads. And what about you, boy? You turned vegetarian yet? <laughs> the fuck is this? I also love the stare at the ground and shame camera work. Like I didn't just send over a dozen geese straight back to hell. It is interesting how similar the setup is between this game and 2013. Family hunting trip in Alaska with your dad and brother. You're supposed to be the bad hunter. It may be missing a monster attack in the 80s, but we are just one bear killing dad scene away from almost complete alignment. However, where Jacob was allegedly just going on a fun hunting trip, by the end, you're wondering what the hell park rangers actually are in this setting. Because Jacob is a conservationist in the same way that Doomguy is a conciliator. Here, there is something immediately weird about the Rainsford family. My father brought me here on my 18th birthday, just as his father brought him. For 200 years, every son of this family has proven his manhood by a hunter's rite of passage, as was the custom of the local tribes. We've heard this story a hundred times, Pop. Don't interrupt me, boy. You listen up. Today isn't just about coal. It's about the future of this family. We own the land you're standing on, and everything you can see. One day, it'll all be yours. But only if you can prove yourself worthy of that legacy. You can start by showing proper respect for this family's traditions. I'll make you proud, sir. Kiss ass. I swear it. Well, I have no doubt about that. Looking like a Scooby-Doo villain doesn't help his case, but his words seem extremely loaded. What's happening should be straightforward, but with his delivery and tone, it sounds like whatever happens is out of his hands. Why is the future of the family at stake when Adrian seems perfectly fine to carry on the mantle? Also, the family traditions are based off of copying the local tribes. If he owns the land, I'm guessing they're not around anymore. Maybe it was due to their not-eating-while-hunting tradition, but I doubt it. So to further prove himself, Cole must take down a 6x6 elk also known as a royal bull elk. Thankfully, you can track it down with your hunter's sense, which is a- oh god. Okay, let's talk more about playing this thing. My hunter's sense could be broken, but either way, classic is a lot more digestible. In theory, this helps you track down animals, which you might do two or three times. In reality, this is for finding collectibles. There are health packs and piles of ammo around, but these usually aren't too tricky to find. What is tricky is the hidden targets and the experience antlers. You do have to be fairly close to highlight these, and while it can see through walls, a lot of the marksman targets can be well outside the useful range for this. Because at first it seems like you would slowly trek animals with this, you know, like a hunt, but I'll say for now that it's mainly for item finding, and later becomes a lot more of a reactive ability. Especially when it sometimes highlights objects of interest that you don't actually do much with. As for the other collectibles, finding enough gives you more health, and you can level up to unlock more shooting galleries. I'm only going to hunt for journals since there are extra story bits there. So those are the side activities beyond obliterating wildlife. Time to pop the elk. Oh right, headshots. Headshots are not the ideal, because if the animal's skull is still intact, you can get a trophy, which gives a little bit of extra XP and health, not a ton to really care about. But after a longer encounter with the beauty of nature, you can hold down the skull button to make all the skulls fly into your face. So if you want to be tactical, break their hearts, not their minds. Okay, the elk is dead. Not bad, bro. Well, that's a clean kill. Could be you got some of me in you after all, boy. Quickly now, we need to do this fast, while the blood's still warm. What? Do what? Ooh, that's uh, kinda gross. Gross? Boy, that there is a delicacy. Breakfast is served. Fresh elk heart. Bon appetit. Oh god, those squelching sounds. Can I try some? No, this here is Cole's heart. You'll get yours when the time comes. 
That's the spirit. Tastes good, don't it? I guess the older brother gets first dibs in the heart? Dad might have worms in him that helped cause the divorce. The scent of a kill can carry for miles up here. We need to get this bull hung and dressed before something smells- Dad! Behind you! It was only a matter of time with them. Are you alright, Pop? I think Cole just saved your life. You never leave a wounded animal running loose in the woods! You shoot an animal, you shoot to kill. Come on, Pop. Cole was just... No excuses, no exceptions. You eat that cat's heart right now. I sure wish Dad got me in the divorce. I have to play my Game Boy Color and watch the bulls play. When really, my heart is in nature. And I want to take nature's heart and eat it raw. Oh my god. Wow, looks like you're going home with two trophies today. This isn't about trophies. A wounded predator is a deadly serious matter. Pain makes the beast violent and unpredictable. In fact, I am reminded of every time I look in the mirror. Introspection? How come you never talk about those scars, Pop? You got those in Africa, right? It appears we have uninvited guests. Smells like poachers. Oh god, not poachers. What if they kill our animals? In fact, a lot already seem to want us dead. They're all dead. Oh god. Yeah, not poachers, hikers. All dead, not by mountain lion. Even Dad, whose idea of fancy living is hiding between the aisles in Home Depot, has no idea what did this. But you are free to explore on the camp for clues, which is mainly collectibles. But you can find a little note about Dad. Mark tells me the land we camped on belongs to Samson Rainsford. Well, Rainsford is something of a legend in these parts. An old-school mountain man who spent half his life hunting big game in Africa. That checks out. Nothing groundbreaking there. But finding the grizzly tracks opens a lot of questions. It's a grizzly bear. No doubt about it. A grizzly? Is something wrong, Pop? Nothing. It's just... Just not what I expected. So he did know something. Actually, for his entire ancestral land spiel, he spent a lot of time in Africa. I don't think the ancient tribals were taking spirit airlines to hunt across continents. Regardless, everyone agrees the bear must die. It seems your brother doesn't agree. Except Cole, apparently. Oh, give me that look, Cole. I'm not your kid brother anymore. I can track and shoot better than you. I'm going after that bear. Alone, if I need to. Oh my god, this is Luke all over again. But before Luke, but still. If you have a problem with that, Cole, feel free to hike back to the lodge and pack your bags. But if you walk away now, don't you ever come back. And the stare down of shame returns. Adrian is the one who should be doing this. The guy just hears a bear, fires off his gun, and causes an avalanche. This is exactly why you don't get to taste the heart, Adrian. We never imagined that forest might be home to predators even more dangerous than ourselves. Oh no. It's starting. Oh god, Liam Neeson is right about wolves again. Everybody be cool. The avalanche separated Cole from his family and knocked him down into the haunted forest. And I don't mean, ah, it looks spooky and there's a full moon. No. There are things you can't quite identify moving just out of frame, and the entire time you hear horrible ghostly wailing, which you shouldn't confuse with the sounds of the animals plotting against you. Did an entire fucking circus escape? Alaska is a stand your ground state, so watch me stand while I put you in it. At first, it's only a few skirmisher wolves who look to be protecting these stone archways. They've also borrowed some of Dunlin's finest from Saruman to scout for him. And the worst part about the wolves having some scouting birds is that's not based on nothing. There have been plenty of sightings and studies of wolves and ravens cooperating in nature. They can symbiotically hunt together for a meal, which does make sense. Now, would they work together to defend the wolves' rundown vampire castle? I'm having doubts about that one, especially because I can hear that it's filled with horse ghosts. And I have had quite enough of that recently.
I hate to say it, but I don't think these are normal wolves. Even under the Cabela's definition of a normal wolf, which are already typically acting like Polish folklore monsters. But these ones trap you in their midnight fortress for an ambush. Yeah, no, those were glowing red eyes. Viet Cong wolves are a huge problem, especially with how the audio in this game works. Like, going back to the elk hunt, at this point the elk is maybe 20 meters away from me. But it'll trigger audio that makes the elk sound like it's in your ear. But really, it's nowhere near that close to you. So instead of a single elk whispering sweet nothings, take that effect and apply it to an entire cohort of undead wolves. Sure, you can snap the camera towards an objective, but the slow panning doesn't work well for the wolf mosh pit. I've played this game before, I'm using better equipment now, but good god is this still hairy. The wolves keep coming, they're climbing over walls to kill me, they're dropping from the cliffs and the roof, when do they end? And I'm sorry, but you might see I'm getting a lot of headshots not being an optimal hunter, but like Dad said, it's not about trophies. Thank god hunters like us are here instead of poachers. Getting your shotgun back does make things more tolerable, but they're still relentless. I will say that compared to their follow-up game, not having the gun model does weirdly make it feel better. Because there your gun model would roughly point to where you were aiming, but outside of aim down sight, it could be really jittery and awkward. So I don't have that issue, but I've still got problems. Oh, finally. God damn it. Okay, now you escape Wolf Sylvania, and why is there a screen shake? Oh my god, fuck off! It's not even that big. Why was there a screen shake for that? It's just like Yamamoto said, behind every blade of grass, a mountain lion. And while I'm trying not to get murdered, I'm finding the journals of those who came before, and they also point to something supernatural happening. New sound last night, a strange high-pitched noise like a whistle. Mark said it was just a bird, but I'm pretty sure he's lying. Now I get to wonder, while crossing the barely stable frozen creek, if it was them or the wolves who set up the 800 bear traps. I'm gonna guess the animals because these have not slowed down the wildlife at all. You would need actual landmines to deal with this wolf population. It looks like the birds might be setting them up in front of me. Am I going crazy? It's hard to keep focus while watching out for birds and bear traps. Meanwhile, the cougars and wolves are audibly having duels in the woods for the honor of fighting me. I fell. I don't even want to be here. I've lost everyone. It's dark, and I have no idea where I am. I should have stayed behind to help the others, but when I heard the screams, I, I panicked. I, I keep hearing that whistle. What could be making the whistle? A new animal? Is Dad behind it? At this point in the timeline, the Black Lion Emperor would still be alive, but he's in Africa. The only Alaskan mastermind was... <laughs> Oh, this is making sense now. This could be the grizzly bear from 2013. Even in that game's flashback sequences, the bear is already scarred. That could be from when he was sent here to subdue the wolves. We could be seeing that happening live, but the whistle sound implies that whoever's doing this has control over them. Though it's more likely the bear started punishing them for their failure, as we've seen him do before, and that whole thing went a little bit sour. Also, chronologically, this is two years before Jacob's first hunt. So the wildlife should be at or close to max strength since it's right before he showed up. That should be obvious by the way the elk are trying to distract me as the wolves move in. That was the control whistle. Who has the whistle? I fucking knew it, and he doesn't have the scar yet. And I know I'm biased, but this game is making a lot more sense played after 2013, at least when it comes to having nice prequel reveals. As for the actual boss fight, there's nothing to write home about. It's fun to try and drop icicles on him, but apparently he's a Primaris grizzly bear. He shrugs off shell after shell after rifle round like it's nothing. It's mainly just staying out of his way and slowly whittling him down. I did shoot him in the face a lot, but it did take me by surprise when it seemed like I actually killed him. But before you can confirm the kill, your brother shows up. Bro, that was unbelievable! I, I just got here. I wanted to help, but, but I couldn't get a clear shot. Dude, are you alright? Yeah, completely correct. You look like you're about to have a stroke, man. D take it easy. Don't try to talk. You can tell me about it back at the house. 
I haven't seen Dad since the avalanche. I don't know where he... Did you hear that? The bear's not dead. He's calling for backup. Oh god! That was a shockingly calm wolf devouring scene. Ten years passed. My father and I hardly spoke. Neither of us willing to forgive the other or ourselves for Adrian's death. Wait a second. My father retired to live in seclusion on his private game reserve in Uganda. Well, I made a name for myself as a professional hunter. It's really all a remix. Special Alaskan family hunt, dad and two brothers. One quote unquote rookie hunter and the other determined hunter. In one story, dad dies by bear, one brother becomes a game hunter. In this story, a brother technically dies by bear, just wolf underlings. Brother becomes big game hunter. Both families reunite in Uganda 10 years later for a special hunt, but 2013 had this detail. What's the party in Uganda? I make it out every year for my dad's birthday. It was his favorite place to hunt when he was younger. He died before they opened it up again. So his dad died in 2003, but by 2011, it was opened back up for a new hunt. This all lines up so far, but why was Uganda closed down? Also, Samson Rainsford retired here? So much for the hardcore legacy of the Alaskan lands. Though if one thing can shake your resolve, the death of your kid would do it. After ten years without a word, my father reached out to me. Soon, we would hunt together again. Not for sport this time, but for redemption. But how? The bear is alive, but wounded in Alaska. Actually, no, Jacob's dad killed it in 2003. Does that mean that Samson knows about the Ugandan Ancient Ones and how things work? Because redemption sounds like targeting the culprit. Good to see you, Cole. It's been what? Ten years? Too long for a father to be deprived the company of his only son. <sighs> I see you still have few words for your old man. <laughs> I can't blame you. Some wounds take more than time to heal. I'm glad you came anyway. There's no one I'd rather have at my side on this hunt. <laughs> Except maybe in Becky here. Actually, Dad seems to have chilled out a lot. Maybe Redemption is just a healthy relationship with his father, because he didn't have that before. I've hunted all over the world. I've seen terrible things. Man-eaters. Predators driven mad by hunger and disease. But I have never seen anything like what's happening where we're headed. Never mind. The attacks began a few weeks ago. Whole families carried off in the night. Nobody knows what's doing the killing. Some say it's a pride of lions, driven to desperation by disease or drought. And Becky here doesn't buy that theory. I reckon I don't either. Honestly, I don't see why not. Make no mistake, son. These beasts we're hunting are pure evil. They said it? I know what you're thinking. Words like good and evil have no place in the natural world. And you'd be right about that. There ain't nothing natural about these. Rainsford, hang on! Oh my god! Back in Uganda. Low health, low ammo. What a shit show. I am proud of the game for just admitting the animals are evil. If you hadn't played this, 2013 really made you fill in the blanks to... That was a bat sound effect. Having the wolves wasn't enough, the birds have to be vampiric too? Pure evil. Okay, I made it to the ranger station, and there are more notes discussing that the animals might be acting strangely. One of the most troubling aspects of this case concerns the ineffectiveness of traps and poisons against these mysterious predators. It's as though these animals have learned to recognize and avoid such traps by sight. Oh, let's step back for a moment. While it is probably more linear than it lets on, the river delta feels sprawling. You can choose between multiple paths at points, but both will probably have snakes and or crocodiles. 
This makes it one of the most useful sections to actually use Hunter Sense in. They're still gonna spray venom in your eyes, just less often. Plus, there are times where Hunter Sense flat out will not work. Even staring directly at the footage now, it's still just a blur of being ambushed. I'm amazed they're singling out lions when every animal here wants mankind dead. The level design doesn't have much of a this is the designated whatever animal zone. It's unpredictable what you'll run into, which does keep things tense. He's putting his paw in the glove box. It's already extremely chaotic, but the game also has a sadistic streak. They're fully aware that you want to leave no animal alive, so they have some points where they do spawn forever. You can farm them for XP endlessly, but that's what they want. To drain your ammo away for the lions. Or for whatever other animal. No. No, that's a trick. It is a death march. The ideal Cabela's Safari. When you finally get to a radio to contact Dad, he says keep going. Link up again with Mbeki and keep heading to Dad's house. For the first time since the day Adrian died, I was no longer certain of my own place at the top of the food chain. The grasslands are... it's more of the same. But while on the trail, you get Mbeki's insights. I stopped the villagers from attacking a woman. They said the woman was a witch, and that she had summoned a dark creature called the Kaptar to prey upon them. I remember my grandfather speaking of the Kaptar when I was a child. You know what? Sure. It's a demon. The Black Lion Emperor being a literal demon would explain so much. But Mbeki says this is called the Kaftar, the same creature he brought up in the intro, which is not the lion. This has thrown a wrench into me following the story. Last night I saw these creatures with my own eyes. They came from the savannah like shadows in the dark. Before I could fire, I heard a strange whistling sound and the beasts fled as one. The villagers are right. Evil forces are at work here. Obviously, the bear was still alive in Alaska, and maybe he did do the whistle there. But Jacob's dad blasted him in 2003, so he couldn't be doing the whistle here. It could be the whistle is some kind of power the Emperor Lion can pass on, but I'm not sure yet. But Mbeki knows what's going on. The villagers are burning the savannah. They believe the attacks on their families are the work of a demon, the Kaftar. They say the Kaftar is a shapeshifter, half man, half beast, like a werewolf. Only much worse. Then the locals seem to have the right idea. I see in your eyes you do not believe in such things as demons. But I ask you, what animal kills for pleasure? Even the famous lions of Savo were driven to kill by hunger, but these beasts leave the bodies of the dead where they fall. I'll level with you and Becky. There's other reasons I agree it's a demon. What is more frightening? The thought of a beast with the mind of a man. Or a man with the soul of a beast. Ah. The wound is infected instantly, and Mbeki needs antibiotics. It's up to Cole to get him a ride. Oh my god, they did want my decals. They love cars. Maybe I should have played this first, I don't know anymore. Whose truck is this, anyway? Poachers using the fires to cover their tracks. How? How are there still poachers? Does it even count as poaching if the rare animal's running five miles to bite you? This is a high-caliber exorcism, who cares about the moral high ground? But now the poachers are after us, so I guess we can have a little car chase. The flames have caused the stampede! The animals are mad with fear! Wait, wait, this isn't right. We we did this already. You can't even shoot the poachers. Oh god, this console was not meant for this kind of action. Another hurt! I'm ahead! Why is Mbeki's microphone so much worse? It's like an actual beta for the 2013 stampede. I've got a bad feeling about this! Why is it all happening again? It even has the part where you almost fall out of the car, but no deagle this time. It runs badly, and they did the sequence better in the next game, so why stick around? Make them move! Oh, they reused the rhino fight too. This doesn't matter. But hey, and Becky's gonna be okay. The friend I spoke of before, you are much like him. My friend died a long time ago, but his spirit lives on in you. You should not have come to Africa. I would not see you fall victim to the same curse that destroyed your father. Go home. You will find nothing here but death. 
Now that opened a lot, and the night drags on and there's an apocalyptic tone to everything. The full moon is back, just like the night Cole's brother died. And Becky's friend was the one who died in the cave in the start, and you played that character. His spirit living on in you is 100% true. You are him, but is the curse in your father also literal? Like, is he a werewolf? Or could he mean curse as in it ruined his life? Or are there more meta layers to this too? As for the wildfire, it's not slowing down the animals much. If anything, there seem to be even more. I could swear their aggression has gone up too because look at this river of lions. Maybe the Kaftar is threatened and this is a better defense. However, the Kaftar is also a shapeshifter. It could be hiding as any animal or any one. Who was whistling on the mountain that night? There might be a connection in plain sight. I give 2011 credit. It has the actual atmosphere of a good horror game. And sure, it'll always lead to some animal jumping on you. It still makes me sad that they don't make these anymore. We do have more realistic and more fantastical hunting games, but none that blurred the line quite like Cabela's did. It's a company that sells fishing gear, and they have an official game where you fight an ancient demon in Africa. This doesn't seem like the kind of plot its clientele would be invested in, but I sure am, especially since in Becky's journals only get more deranged. The destruction will be terrible, but we have no choice. We must act now before we are all dead. By the time you catch up to him, it's daybreak, he's still wounded, or wounded again, and his hiding spot looks like an old military base, out here in the middle of nowhere where there's a demon rumor. The soldiers were long gone, but as I would soon discover, a new army had emerged from the jungle to take their place. The fuck does that mean? This is where I first met your father 30 years ago. It was a secret place, an evil place. We should have burned it to the ground. Why am I getting a military rifle in this level? You seek the truth. Perhaps you will find it here among the bones of the dead. I'm really not liking this talking, Becky. They call it the Nightfall Program. A covert research project. They say they're here to study animal behavior modification. Breeding, training, chemical conditioning. They're making monsters. Living weapons on a leash. What on earth were they training out here? More evil wolves or big cats? It's so obvious now. Of course it's this. Careful now, the baboons have learned to throw rocks with deadly accuracy. Look for cover in the courtyard. I mean, they were actively jamming me in the 2013 game. I really should have sniffed out the baboon super soldier project. They've mastered small unit tactics and try to suppress you as other baboons flank. Also, what kind of baboons are these? They're horrifying. Was that Cole's breathing at low health that sounded like a monster? Or was that just the animal audio being badly placed again? Whatever, this is what I wanted. Baboon Waco. Oh god. The best part is it gets way worse inside the base. People bought this game for their grandpa. I'm at a genuine loss for words here, like, what human being can give justice to the baboon holdout firefight while the soundtrack actually uses military style drums? It's the fact it's so well done. I think that's the key. Like someone at Cabela's corporate said super soldier baboons, but no one was smiling or laughing. Someone in the C-suite had this as an actual recurring nightmare and wanted to do it justice. The downtime sounds like exploring in a Fallout game. The only phrase that keeps going through my brain is, why baboons? 
The Baboon King would still be alive, so maybe he sent them here to raid the armory. He's got an audio log. Just gotta catch up with him and I- Ah! There he is! The Baboon Super Soldier base is full of landmines. Are they for the baboons? This is the iconic don't die by landmines or baboons section, and landmines are the trickier one. Because if they chain react or you step wrong, you'll die fast. The thing is, you can't sneak through them, you have to blow some up. It's also not clear which government set up the baboon base. I would guess Uganda. But maybe the Illuminati or something is involved and I just missed it. Whoever they were, they hired Samson and Mbeki to capture the Kaftar. At this point, I think you have to conclude it's real. Locals say it's some kind of demon. As far as I can tell, we're hunting a new breed of hyena. We had no idea what was waiting for us in that cave. After that, the program went off the rails. The research staff lost control, people started dying. They called in soldiers, but it was already too late. The loading screen undersold it. The baboons actually conquered this army base, and no one could reclaim it for 30 years. It's understandable since there are lion hurricanes outside and highly trained baboons inside, but it could be the government buried this project under the floorboards and never wanted to speak of it again. Then they all charge Mbeki. Maybe they remember him from the 80s or they were taught about him. Now he's dying of big cat infection and baboon scratches and demon energy and he has taken a lot. Your father ordered me to bring you to him, but after what you did for me, my conscience would not permit it. I came here to kill the Kaftar myself. Beware, go. The creature devoured your father's heart. The evil lives on in his blood. The only cure is death. The only cure is death. This is some roided up hyena. I've got to get down there and finish this. As I stepped into the yawning mouth of the cave, heard a sound like the laughter of devils echoing in the bowels of hell. I could feel eyes watching me from the darkness, though whether it was my father's gaze I felt, or the eyes of the beast, I will never know. Looking back, there have been some interesting running themes. Mbeki said Samson's heart and very blood were cursed. In the start of the game, he had Cole eat a heart. Eating Elkhart wouldn't be that uncommon up there, eating it raw certainly is. Even raw liver is fairly risky. There's something ritualistic about the whole thing in a way that doesn't check out for just, oh, the hyena ruined your dad's life. Not to mention, the Kaftar is an actual cryptid, but the legend comes from India and not Africa, though the series isn't known for putting animals where they should be. Also, how is Mbeki protecting Cole by knocking him out in this war zone full of poachers and animals and wildfires? He does respect Samson, and now Cole for helping him, but I think Mbeki planned to kill Cole but couldn't do it when the time came. Probably Samson too. He speaks very literally about everything and I don't think he'd turn that off just to make an observation on your family. The spirit of Mbeki's old friend is in your body, and your father is cursed and may have already passed it along to you. I think he was out to take down everybody when he got the chance, but then got cold feet. Whether it was out of mercy or fear, we'll never know. Welcome home, son. It's been too long. Since we hunted together. You're looting tons of ammo and blasting through old bunker doors. And all the while you can find the records of the military studying the Kaftar. They don't know if it's an aberrant or a long lost species, but it can control other animals. That does explain the swarms of bats I have to gun down with an assault rifle. This thing is relentless. My only question is who gave who the animal control ability? The Black Lion Emperor, or whatever this hyena is. The cave paintings the hunters discovered suggest the Kaftar species has inhabited this area for hundreds, perhaps thousands of years. That's not that long at all. Is it tied to a biblical event? You were the eldest, but you were weak. Untested. Don't you see? I needed an heir worthy of our family name. Did Dad kill Adrian because he was younger? What's happening? I loved your brother. see my boys forged into men, as I was forged, and my father before me, by a baptism of blood. I've got to admit, even after playing 2013, I didn't expect a baboon super soldier facility that immediately leads to Dagoth Ur speeches from your father. The cave system is covered in paintings and markings, but no stone structures, so I don't know if this is the ancient ones from before either. I thought the wrong son died that day. 
So he didn't kill him. Interesting. It all comes full circle, back to the bone zone from the very start. But now the paintings are obvious. They depict the hyena demon controlling the wildlife. There was always a method behind the madness. I never thought you'd make it this far. I can see now. I've been wrong about a lot of things. I should have listened to him, Becky. He, he told me I'd lost my mind. All these years, planning, preparing for this day. And now that you're finally here, I can't bear to watch another son die. It's time for you to go, son, before it's too late. Come on, I'll show you the way out. Were they going to hunt the Kaftar together, or was Samson going to do something to Cole? The years of planning could mean he was training his entire family to come kill this thing, and all the Alaskan tribal connection was just a smokescreen. But the elk blood ritual seemed important. That couldn't just be set dressing. I know I wasn't the father you wanted, but I need you to know, Cole, how proud I am of the man you have- Oh my god, fucking baboon landmines. Oh, it was a normal hyena the whole time. Bet they feel silly. Okay, it's actually a horde of hyenas. It could be the Kaftar's harem, but I'm not entirely sure hyenas work that way. And frankly, the less I know about how hyenas mate, the better my life is. It's a gauntlet of landmines and pissed off hyenas. And even though pacing-wise this feels like finishing things, it won't be the end of the story. I've arranged for one of the hunters, an American named Rainsford, to smuggle some of my files out of the country. With that data, I should be able to resurrect the program at a later date. We knew this wouldn't end things, but 2013 won't be the last safari. I stepped through the trapdoor and emerged in the hall of my father's house. In that moment, I felt a strange mixture of horror and relief. My worst fears had been realized, but I knew then that I had finally reached the end of my journey. One way or another, the nightmare would soon be over. There is something poetic about fighting it among all of Dad's taxidermied animals. Was it Dad or the Kaftar that really killed them? Maybe they're under the Kaftar's influence, or maybe it's a response to human presence in the area. For how much is explained, a lot is still left open. It's a fitting final battle, but not the most exciting. I mean, for all that demon hyping up, it looks like a big albino hyena. But after a long hunt, we've reached the end. Why does he look so similar to Jacob? He could pass for his brother and... The photo looks even more like him! Is the Kaftar not physical? I... That's the end of the game. It's not as over-the-top action-packed as 2013, but it makes me fear that game even more and I feel like I understand even less than I did. Does the universe choose a Kaftar and Safari Hunter to endlessly circle each other forever? One Master Hunter versus one Master of Nature until the end of time. I honestly don't know, but there might need to be another Safari. In fact, I've run numbers and there are too many adventure games just to cover them on Halloween. It won't be all the time, but there's too many to talk about and more have to come. Have a happy Halloween. I hope I didn't miss something. Will there be a Dark Tide video? There will be more Warhammer videos in general in the next while. There's a lot of interesting games to cover there still, but I definitely needed a cleanser from it. Favorite scary moment in a non-horror game? If it's not a section or level in just a moment, then this one. What is the worst Halloween candy? Easy. Wax lips. Even an Easter treat like Peeps that I hate, 
I could kind of get. Who on the planet is asking for wax lips? Nobody, that's who. Would I move to Silent Hill or Ravenholm? Without a doubt, Ravenholm. I know what I'm in for there. I don't know the details of what to expect from Silent Hill, but I know it won't be a great time. Any horror movie or game that scarred me as a kid. Some of you know the alien story, but there were other factors with that one. The best answer is an obscure made-for-TV movie called Peter Benchley's Creature. I had nightmares for weeks about sharks dropping down from trees to get me, and Cabela's hasn't delivered that experience just yet. Who knows, maybe these games get some kind of spiritual successor. You are a conservationist, yes?